though first impressions are so important and so hard to unwind, well, given that we know that, why are we so hit and miss with the process of forming first impressions? In customer service, the first thing seen should be a big, warm, sincere smile. But is it happening? It could be a big smile in the voice, over the phone, or in person, or face to face. Leaders are often terrible hypocrites. They scowl their staff, but expect those same staff to be radiating big smiles to the customers. We need to lead from the front and be a smile giver every day, every time. Welcome back to this weekly edition every Tuesday of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President of Dale Kennedy Training here in Japan and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the Cutting Edge? In this show, we are looking at the critical areas for success in business in Japan. We want to help advance everyone's thinking so that we'll be at the forefront, the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. Before we get into this week's topic, here is what caught my attention lately. Dementia has been diagnosed in more than 5 million Japanese. Two thirds of those cases are caused by Alzheimer's disease. The government estimates that that number will increase to around seven to eight million by 2030. That represents around about 7% of the population. At that time, Japanese with dementia will hold financial assets of $2 trillion. A recent survey by Jun Narumoto Professor of Psychiatry at Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine and three other researchers found that 30% of dementia patients and families have suffered financial losses because of the condition. From 2010 to 2015, there were almost 3,000 cases of misuse of dementia patients' assets with 21 billion yen being stolen by their guardians. In other news, a group of researchers based in Japan and the USA believe that administering allergy shots to women during pregnancy could prevent their unborn children from developing allergies after birth and throughout their lives. The shots prevent the production of antibodies that trigger allergic reactions such as atopic dermatitis, asthma, pollen, and food allergies. Finally, Tokyo has maintained its spot as the city with the most Michelin-starred restaurants on the planet. It has 230 restaurants with the prestigious stars. Paris has 10 three-star restaurants, while Tokyo has 13. Paris has 16 with two stars, and Tokyo has 52. For one stars, Paris has 92, while Tokyo has 165. If you're a foodie, Tokyo is the place to be, folks. This is episode number 66, and we're talking about, hey leaders, are you a scowler or a smiler? Sore dewa ikimashō, so let's get going. Grumpy, angry looking, unfriendly, customer facing staff. Welcome to American Retail from Hell. Dale Cunningham's Human Relations Principle number five is smile. May sound a bit simplistic, but actually, the idea is very profound, has a lot of depth. You would never guess that that idea to smile is there when you meet people, especially when in customer facing roles, and that this idea had been around since How to Win Friends and Influence People was first published in 1936. Perhaps Japanese politeness has spoiled me, but some customer service is shocking when you travel overseas. The idea of smiling when you answer the phone hasn't made it to some of the staff working in major hotels yet either. 
very angry voices would pick up the phone and repeat the name of the hotel. I asked one lady if she was angry. That threw her. She said, no. So I asked her, why did she answer the phone with such an abrupt, unfriendly, angry voice? Her self-awareness factor was trending into negative numbers. And she was completely baffled by my line of questioning. Maybe I, well, maybe I've been in Japan too long, but I don't think that is it. Buying food, checking in for your flight, or entering the airport lounge, unsmiling, unfriendly staff assault your senses. No smiling, not even one of those pathetic fake jobs. To top it off, they then produce a section from the training manual and say, have a nice day, whatever. The incongruency of greeting you with an I don't care attitude and their final kind words has obviously not even been partially explored yet. Giving your instructions to the cabbie or the serving staff and then being greeted with total silence is a bit disconcerting. Do they know what I want? Are we clear about what needs to happen next? Why is there no acknowledgement of what you want? Excuses such as, ah, it's America, or it's New York, or it's Chicago, or it's the minimum wage syndrome, don't cut it. These abysmal service interactions are a simple failure of staff leadership. The companies employing these staff have poor leadership. Obviously, the people destroying their company's brand are not being trained properly. There are obvious conceptual barriers at play here about what is important. The message is pretty clear. You, the customer, are just not important. That fundamental idea flows down from the company leadership. If the leader is an unreformed scowler, then they are sending out a clear message to their team about how to conduct personal interactions. So don't be a total non-smiler and expect big smiles on the part of the team. As bosses, we have to lead from the front on this one, so let's work on that smile. What a fantastic opportunity for companies to win in the marketplace. The cost of a genuine smile is obviously too expensive for these failing companies. Imagine, though, that properly led staff were being trained properly on just this one key thing. Smile when you meet a customer. Behind that idea is a whole gamut of attitudes and concepts about the task at hand. These untrained, unskilled people are totally focused on work processes. Check in the passenger, issue boarding passes, hand over the hot dog, head into the traffic to get to the destination. No, no, no. The customer experience is the key, not the work process. Why is this so hard? Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the Leadership Training for Managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. The bestseller, Japan Sales Mastery, is the new Bible of selling in Japan. To sell to Japanese buyers, you need to create long-term partner-level trust, fully understand Japanese buyers' real needs, convince buyers with your solutions, overcome their hesitation, fear, and doubt, know how to ask for the order, ensure repeat orders. This book is the product of 30 plus years in the trenches selling in Japan. Order Japan Sales Mastery now. Welcome back. Customer service is all biology. Teaching our teams to smile at the first interaction with the customer sets up an internal chemical reaction that will create the right momentum to create an experience 
that adds to the value of the brand and to the revenues of the organization. To do this, we need to properly train our leaders to make sure they get it, so they can ensure their staff get it too. This lack of congruency in the service sector is costing firms big money. The upsell and cross-sell missed opportunities are frankly scary, pathetic and unnecessary. So, do an audit of your own team. Brace yourself. Call your own organisation at different times of the day, especially around lunchtime when the chances are high of someone not normally picking up the phone is now your brand ambassador. That can be a scary experience and you quickly realise why we need to train everyone to represent the brand. Remember, if we come across someone from your organisation and they are impressive, we think everyone is impressive. However, if we come across someone from your organisation who is a real dud, we think everybody must also be a dud. Simple but true. Listen to how your staff answer the phone. Do they say the name of the organisation, their own name, and do it with a smile in their voice? Observe the customer facing interactions and see if the genuine smile is there or not. Here is a trick. Can you train your staff to smile? It's not impossible, but let's get the right people on the right bus and in the right seat so that the first impression is a big, happy smile because of their natural reaction. If that is not possible, then work on getting their minds around the idea that a smile is shorthand for what the brand represents and what the organisation stands for. Importantly, we must explain where their role fits into the whole picture. We can sometimes forget that all of us are in sales. We are selling our organisations to potential clients at every single point of contact. Jan Carlson's great book, Moments of Truth, explored making sure every point of contact with a client was being done correctly, building the brand and cementing customers' loyalty. We have to get each point working and can't have weak links in the chain or we make no progress. I'm often critical of the polite but formularistic and robot service we get here in Japan. However, it beats the genuine disinterest of a lot of service staff I meet overseas. As company leaders, I don't think we should be satisfied with anything less than excellent smiles as the first point of contact. Yes, it requires effort, leadership and training, but the majority of our competitors are doing a pretty miserable job. So let's differentiate ourselves and win. If we can get a smile going at the outset, a lot of good things will follow. And Dale Cunningham's principle, number five, smile, can be the catalyst to success. On the other hand, if we can't manage this much, then we better start asking some pretty harsh questions of ourselves. As leaders, let's start with ourselves and start smiling at our own team and get the preferred chemical cocktail working for us. Action steps. One, call your own organisation at different times of the day to check how clients are being handled. Two, ensure leaders are explaining to staff that they represent the brand and how they interact with clients makes all the difference to how the brand is regarded. Three, select customer facing staff who smile naturally. Four, practice Dale Cutting's principle number five, smile. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show is here to help you succeed in Japan. Subscribe on YouTube, share it with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching this episode and remember to hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now. enjapan.dale Cunningham.com, it's awesome value, so check it out. In episode 67, we are talking about the biggest myth in presenting. Find out more about that next week. So, Yoroshiku, Onegai Tashimas. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you 
And we've only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up. <laughs>